please allow me to introduce our company. So as usual, I need to emphasize on our disclaimer where this presentation has not been reviewed by Security Commission Malaysia and is provided to you solely for general information and does not constitute any recommendations. Investments are subject to investment rate, therefore you shall seek advice from quality advisory before making any investment decisions. So Philip Capital is a wholly owned subsidiary of Philip Capital Holdings and Yang Prahat. It is incorporated on 7 October 1995. So our headquarters is in Kuala Lumpur and we have branches distributed across Malaysia such as Kota Damansara, Malacca, Penang, Johor, Kuching, Cebu at Sarawak and our new branch at Kota Kinabalu. So other than that, Bay Capital is a trading participant of USA Malaysia Derivative Perhat, hearing participant of USA Malaysia Derivative Hearing Perhat, and also a holder of Capital Market Service License, which is known as CMSRL License. So next, I would like to take this opportunity to extend our gratitude on behalf of my company, which is Philip Capitals, to our clients. Without you, we are unable to achieve the awards. So in 2020, we achieved three awards from Busan Malaysia, which is the best overall, the best retail, and the best institutional directive trading participants. So next, our mother companies, which is Philip Capitals, has office and branches over 14 different countries. Next, for futures, we cover not only products in Malaysia, we all cover from different exchanges such as Singapore Exchange, CME, CBOT, NYMEX, and more. With our strength of global coverage, clients are able to trade foreign and local products under the same platforms. Next is the product which is available. So uh, actually, Philip Capital mainly focused on product offering, which is uh, futures, which is and the uh, contract for difference, which is the CFP. So next, why should you choose Philips? First of all, we provide advisory service such as inquiries. Next, we also provide wide range of products for futures that enable clients to trade both local and foreign products. Other than that, we will send out the latest market news and commentaries to clients every day through email for your reference. Lastly, our headquarters at have 24 hours brokering and execution support. This is important for clients who trade foreign futures and also dealer can assist your inquiries and text. So uh, next, I will introduce our speaker for today, which is uh, Mr. Liao. So without further ado, uh, I will pass this session for Liao to start his uh, webinar for tonight. Okay, yeah, so thank you, Sherwin, uh, for the introduction. Uh, let me do a, do a quick check. Uh, can you uh, hear me, Sherwin, loud and clear? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, can you see my share screen, my presentation slides? Yes, I saw your screen now. All right, okay, thank you. So, okay, thank you, Sherwin, for the wonderful uh, introduction, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this webinar tonight. Okay, so today I will talk about trading in the crude oil market. Yeah, so this is the webinar outline for tonight. So uh, as usual, we'll do a very quick uh, introduction of crude oil. Then we'll look at the over, overview of the oil market and then we'll identify uh, the crude oil, the historical crude oil price by using our Fibonacci tool. And then we'll look at different types of trades uh, in different uh, trading time zone. And we will do some chart reading and lastly, which is the one of the most important part, is the trading mindset. Okay. Okay. So uh, last month we have this uh, webinar about understanding crude oil futures market. So uh, in the previous uh, webinar, uh, we basically talk about uh, some of the basic things, uh, fundamental uh, things, or knowledge about crude oil. Okay. So. But uh, don't worry if you miss out our webinar last month. So today uh, we'll just uh, very, very uh, briefly go through uh, on the fundamental side of the crude oil in the beginning of this webinar. 
Okay, so basically, uh, there are two main types of uh, crude oil. One is the WTI crude oil, and another is the Brent crude oil. So basically, the WTI crude oil is uh, the benchmark for the US, and the extraction place is in the US land. So uh, normally, when you look at the picture like this, when people extract crude oil uh, using this method like this, then probably you are looking at the WTI crude oil. Whereas, uh, on the other hand, if you are looking at the Brent crude oil, uh, they are the benchmark uh, basically in the Middle East, Europe, and Africa, and the extraction place is North Sea. So uh, if you look at the picture here, uh, basically when you see some of the off offshore oil rig platform, or you look at some of the Petronas picture, when they show you this uh, offshore platform, then probably uh, we are looking at the brand crude oil. Okay? So uh, you can trade both uh, crude oil in the NYMEX exchange, and then for Brent crude oil, you can now trade uh, on the ICE exchange. Okay? Uh, in terms of geopolitical influence, uh, well, I mean, logically, uh, the WTI crude oil was extracted from the US land, and so uh, it will be impacted uh, by the US uh, geopolitical uh, influence. Whereas for the Brent crude oil, because of the market benchmark as well as their extraction place, then uh, we are looking at uh, some of the geopolitical event uh, mainly in the you know in the Middle East area. Okay. However, having said that, uh, in real life, uh, both of the crude oil, WTI crude oil and Brent crude oil, their price basically move uh, in the same direction. Okay. So regardless whether you have uh, the the influence is from the US or from the OPEC regions, that uh, the both will affect the WTI and the Brent crude oil price direction. Okay. Uh, in terms of pricing, uh, uh, history, uh, normally the WTI crude oil price will be slightly uh, cheaper below the brand crude oil. Okay, So the brand crude oil price will be uh, higher than the WTI crude oil. So you can see their price movement such as the, the soybean oil and our uh, crude palm oil. So normally soybean oil will be much higher, the price will be much higher than our CPO price. Okay. Okay, so uh, historically, uh, the, crude, the WTI crude oil and the brand crude oil, they are basically the price, they move in the same direction and their spread is uh, quite tight, tightly uh, following each other. Except in this uh, period where some of the, uh, there is some of the, uh, you know, uh, different event happening in, in the US and in the Euro European country as well as the Middle East. So basically, uh, between uh, the year of 2011 until uh, 2014, uh, there were some of the mix of bad good news happening uh, in the US and Europe separately. And then, you know, the US, they, they released a lot of oil from the strategic petroleum reserve, whereas at the same time, uh, there's some uh, supply issues in the Euro and the, the Libya war uh, in the North Africa region. And also uh, the, the US, they have the, the shell oil production uh, technology where they, they were able to, to extract and pump a lot of oil uh, from their oil rigs. Okay? So the, the only time where the, two, uh, the price were have, a, have this kind of huge uh, discrepancy was because of uh, two, uh, a lot of things happen in this uh, two different regions. Okay? Other than that, they basically moves in a very tight spread. Okay, so um, weekly calendar. So if you are looking at the oil market, whether you are trading or whether you are in the oil business, then basically you, you pay attention to this uh, weekly data release. So on every Tuesday, we have this API weekly crude oil stocks. So API stands for uh, American Petroleum Institute. So this reports, uh, uh, this, this data tells you the inventory levels of the US crude oil, gasoline and distillate stocks. So it shows how much oil and product is available in storage, and it is an indicator of the overview of the US petroleum demand. So when there's a when the, there's an increase in the crude inventories more than expected, then normally it is a, it means a, a weaker demand, and so it is bearish for the crude price or, or vice versa. Okay. 
And on every Wednesday, we have the EIA Inventory Count. So EIA stands for Energy Information Administration. So uh, it tells the weekly change in the number of barrels of commercial crude oil held by the US uh, oil and gas company. So the level of the inventory will in, impact the petroleum products price. Okay, so uh, when there's an increase in the crude inventories, more than expected. So that means there's a weaker demand. And so it is bearish for the crude prices or vice versa. Okay. And lastly, on every Friday, we have the Baker huge rig count. So it is, uh, it is the barometer for the oil drilling industry. So when the drilling rigs are active, they consume uh, the products and the services produced by the oil, oil service industry. So uh, the, the huge rig count can be seen as a leading indicator of the demand for oil products. Okay, so this is uh, just a screenshot of the API stocks report and, and the EIA inventory report. So you can find uh, this weekly data from a lot of other websites, but uh, this screenshot, uh, we took it from the investing.com. So it, okay, so you can see on every Tuesday, uh, this is the US time. So if you want to wait for the data release, then you might need to wait for 4.30 a.m. in Malaysia time, okay? And the EIA inventory, it uh, released on every Wednesday, and uh, it released on uh, at 10.30 p.m. Malaysia time. And this is the Baker huge break count. It released on every Friday. Uh, this is the US 1 p.m. So in Malaysia, if you want to wait, then it will be 1 a.m. Okay. Um, so in terms of the rig, the rig count, you can see there's a you know generally a, a uptrend. So uh, up till here, the latest one, <coughs> up to last Friday, we have 595 all rig count. So hopefully, if the US is going to bring down the inflation, put down the, the oil price, then probably we might see a higher big count, probably above 600. Okay, okay so well, why, why trade crude oil futures? So this is not something new. Um, so basically crude oil uh, futures market is a very deep and very active market. And you know, uh, you can trade uh, regardless of, of what the, the stock market is, is doing, you know, just basically trading the, the commodities itself. Okay, so this is the uh, some of the comparison. So uh, depending on what time zone you are, time frame you are looking at. So for the past uh, five years or so, um, uh, the, when when there's a drop in by percentage, when there's a drop in the crude oil price, then probably they drop much than uh, the, the the index or you know the, some of the energy index. So if we look at uh, since the opening of the economies after the pandemic, after the COVID, then oil price has rise, uh, rise in percentage the most, much higher than uh, the brown color. The brown color is the S&P energy index and the, the, the light blue or the green, if you like, uh, is the Bursa energy index. So when the commodities uh, is, has a huge upswing, but if you have, if you are looking at the oil and gas, you know, companies in our Bursa, uh, then probably uh, it's not that performing well, then you can start to look at the, the commodities and directly trade it. So this is uh, basically the same as uh, in Malaysia, when you look at the FCPO and the plantation stock, you know, like last year when the plantation stocks were not performing, but then the CPO price keeps on going up, then you might as well just uh, directly jump on uh, on the commodity itself. Okay, uh, contract specs, again, this is not something new. So basically, if you want to trade, uh, we have the WTI crude oil. So this one, light sweet crude oil, uh, is the, we call it the so-called the big contract or the full contract of the WTI, okay? So micro contract is the, we call it the small contract, which is 10% smaller than the big contract, okay? And for, if you want to trade the brand crude oil, um, this is the big, uh, we call it a big contract for the brand crude oil and the mini brand uh, you can see it is a small contract for the brand crude oil. okay so basically they run uh, 23 hours but for the mini brand it runs roughly uh, 22 hours in a day okay overview of the oil market okay so again so this is just uh, a snapshot 
uh, to, to have an idea on the physical location of the oil being extracted. So WTI crude oil is being extracted from the US. Okay? US is the green, uh, they, they produce a lot of oil. Whereas for the brand crude, we are looking at this area. We have the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. Okay, okay so, so these are the five uh, world top producing countries. So you can see at this, since the last few years, uh, the, the United States uh, took over Russia and Saudi Arabia and became the world uh, largest uh, oil producing countries. Okay. okay so if we, if we dip, uh, dive in into this 14.5% uh, in the US, then we are looking at Texas. So Texas is the states, you know, uh, they produce the, the most oil that uh, contribute to the U.S. Uh, crude oil production. So this is why uh, one of the reasons it's called WTI. WTI is actually stands, stands for West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil. Okay, OPEC. So when we, when we are talking about crude oil, we must know uh, the OPEC and OPEC plus uh, member countries. So OPEC, uh, this organization, organization is basically, you know, sort of uh, trying to control the oil price and to take care of their member countries. So uh, at this moment, uh, Equator and UAE is, are not longer in the OPEC. So at this point, OPEC countries are this about 13 countries here. So you can see they are quite concentrated, okay, uh, in, in terms of location. And then we also have the OPEC plus member countries, which is another extra 10 countries, which is not the OPEC member country, but then they kind of have some, uh, you know, some communication with the OPEC uh, countries to, to have a further uh, power in terms of pricing, uh, controlling the production to the world uh, crude oil market. Okay, okay so again, uh, Oil production country this year, so we can see United States is far overtaking uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia. So at this, by looking at this chart, you probably have an idea who has the response, huge responsibility to sort of cut down the supply uh, of the crude oil and so bring down the price. Okay, and we have to take note that Russia, the second largest, is out of the equation already. So in I mean, at least in terms of the Western countries, we are, Russia is out of the equation. Okay, so uh, if you look at some of the small countries down here, you know, sometimes when you look at the, the news and say, oh, Iran is going to release more oil or some of the, you know, some of the uh, uh, countries, maybe Libya or even Venezuela, if you look at the news and say, oh, they are going to pump more oil and you see it's a, 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 a minor, drop in the crude oil uh, price. But then if you look at the data, then you know the impact of them uh, pumping more oil, the impact will be much lower than, than we think. Okay, so this is again, uh, some of the table of the oil consum consumption. Okay? Again, United States consume the most oil. So uh, if, if you are looking at bringing down the demand, you know, to bring down the price, then we know who has a, the largest responsibility to, to sort of bring down the demand. Okay? And secondly, is the China and India. So although China and India are the third and, I mean, the second and the third, but then if uh, we, we all know uh, China and India, they are actually buying uh, some of the crude oil from, from Russia at a much cheaper, much cheaper price. Okay? So, when you, when you see, oh, China is going into lockdown, uh, there might be a, a small demand from China, then, I mean, you know, uh, since they are already buying from Russia, then in the real, real scenario, then probably their lockdown impact might be smaller than, than we think, okay? So, so far, since the invasion of Ukraine, uh, Russia has earned uh, $24 billion from China. And China paid $19 billion to, to Russia, which is, the amount double from a year ago. And India paid about $5 billion to Russia, which is five times higher than a year ago. 
Okay, so if the crude oil price is higher, then the Russia is able to discount a lot more to to uh, China and India. Okay, so this is the economy reports. Uh, we wouldn't go through each of them. Okay, but then uh, we let let spend some time on the natural gas. Okay, uh, although these two commodities are not really a good comparison and they probably don't have really a, a sort of a core relationship, but then in terms of the energy uh, energy market, uh, then they probably move uh, in terms of uh, almost the same direction. Okay, So when uh, the crude oil or the natural gas goes up, then they both move in the same direction. And then if they goes down, then <coughs> they move in the same direction. Okay, so again, uh, a little bit uh, on the natural gas. So if you look at the natural gas, uh, for for some of the you know experienced trader, then you probably know what is elite wave. But for newcomers, uh, elite wave is basically uh, you know uh, 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 identified tools to look at the, the momentum of the price. Okay, so uh, there are two main uh, two main waves. So if the number waves one, two, three, and four, we call it the impulsive uh, waves. So which is which indicates that there's a lot of momentum, and the price will sort of have a, a super, you no know, super momentum to push to a very new high. Okay, so in in this case, a natural gas kind of perfectly fit in our impulsive wave, and now we are looking at the, the correction wave, which is uh, the for the price to drop back to the normal uh, level. Okay, so uh, normally for in, uh, corrective wave, we use A, B, and C. Okay, so at this point, uh, natural gas kind of perfectly fit in our uh, B wave at this moment. Okay, so I'm, uh, I mean at this point, the Russia has turned off the, the gas pipeline. Uh, then probably uh, natural gas might stay here for a bit uh, before uh, dropping uh, back to to a much lower level. Okay, how long we wouldn't know, and how low we also wouldn't know. Okay. Okay. So June uh, consumer price index. So uh, just a very brief uh, layout about the, the inflation data from the US recently. So again, energy is still con the largest contribution to the inflation data, uh, in uh, inflation rate. So the June uh, US inflation rate was about. 9.1%, uh, and you can see uh, the energy sort of contribute the most. Okay, so now let's look at uh, historical uh, price by using our Fibonacci. Okay, yeah, so uh, for, for, again, for those experienced traders, then probably you know how to use the Fibonacci, but for some of the newcomers tonight, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Fibonacci. So this is a very good uh, analysis tool when you have a big swing, a huge pricing, uh, like the current situation that we are in now. Right. Okay. So um, Fibonacci, uh, it, normally it will give you a very high accuracy to determine some of the hidden, uh, hidden support or resistance. Okay. And this, uh, it can be applied to, to all time frames from mini chart, hourly, daily, weekly, and even monthly chart, you can use it, okay? Uh, and then when you are using uh, Fibonacci, when you plot it on your chart, then you pay attention to the golden ratio, okay? So these are the four golden ratio, but of course, uh, practically, you wouldn't need to memorize the golden ratio, okay? Because uh, you, if you just look at the chart, then you will notice most of the price uh, that basically sticks to uh, this golden ratio. Okay, so now we this is a monthly chart with the, the, the time frame of about about 30 years. So even though we are using the monthly chart, look at the 30 years price, and if you plot on the Fibonacci, uh, we can easily identify uh, some of the important uh, we call it zone. Uh, okay, so okay, so you have the zone A, which is a super high price for crude oil, and I mean at least historically. When the price hits uh, into the zone A, then it wouldn't last long. And then we have the zone B. Basically, we have some kind of consolidation uh, in in this zone B. Okay? And zone B, the price is about from eighty to one hundred and ten dollar. 
and then we can uh, have a look at the zone c which is a very well relatively cheap crude oil price which is at about 70 to to uh, about 40 or 50 level here okay. okay so this is the line chart now let's have a look at the um, the candlestick chart okay so of course a lot has happened throughout the 30 years and a lot of happened the price goes up and down but we will just um, mainly look at the, the the high high swing and the low swing okay so the first high swing we have seen uh from about 60 dollar to 140 level it is because similar to now it is also because of the war so we have the u.s war we are, U US was having war with the Iraq and uh, you know a lot of happening so it kind of pushed up the price okay so and follow a few years later then we have the financial crisis uh, you know yeah basically the, in, the, in the Western countries uh, they have a crisis so the demand definitely is going down and you know yeah so the oil price fell from $147 to $35 in seven months, about half a year. And natural gas price also fell for about 80% like that. Okay. And then slowly it creeps uh, because of some of the political unrest in the North Africa or the Middle East, then again, a war will make the crude oil price rise up. Okay. And then yeah, consolidate for a bit. Then drop again uh, because uh, the, the US they, they have invented the, the shell shell gas or the shell oil production uh, method, which has allowed the US to pump a lot of oil to the market. And then the Saudi Arabia was having a price war with the US in terms of crude oil, you know, so it drops down again. And then a lot of happened, and then we have the COVID, which pushed the crude oil into negative price, which is yeah, quite a surprise at the time. And then uh, we were talking about the re reopening of the uh, economy, the, the endemic, things like that. And so uh, the last push was given by the Russia-Ukraine war. Okay. Okay, so back to the our daily chart. This is about 12-month chart. Okay, so now uh, for some of the experienced traders, probably you know what to do and what zone you might have. Okay, but then yeah, if you are, you are yeah, I mean, average trader and if you look at the price where, where you can <coughs> have a high swing like that, then you might get a little bit confused. Okay, so you can, again, on the daily chart, you can plot uh, the Fibonacci on your uh, daily chart. Okay, so you can see the, the, the zone. Okay, so in this case, uh, we can easily uh, identify this an uptrend here and then uh, I also what is able to identify two main uh, important uh, resistance level here before entering my red zone okay so at this point you you can uh, identify this maybe in the middle of May or late May okay in does it's not because uh, we are having this seminar then I talk it back okay so at, in the middle of May then probably you are able to identify these two a major resistance and then it, it fell to uh, break above and it fell to break above and so at this point you are able to identify a sort of like a u shape okay a u shape here and then uh, slowly on the right hand side here you kind of uh, find a little bit of pullback and before shooting up to the, our red zone 120 level okay so at this point uh, does it look like a cup and handle to you so when you are uh, at, you know, maybe in mid of May or late June, then you probably have identified this cup and handle pattern, then you are looking for breakout, okay? Okay, so this is uh, a little bit of uh, some easy to understand picture about cup and handle pattern. So normally cup and handle pattern is a bullish signal. Uh, the right, normally the right hand side will be uh, less seller. So it tests the, the major resistance two times and then four pulls back a little bit and then breaks, uh, breaks above on the third. Okay. So uh, the, the cup and handle, it takes time to form. It can be a few weeks, a few months, or even a few years to, to form. Okay. 
So on the other hand, if you look, if you saw, if you identify any inverted U shape here and inverted cup, then it is a bearish sign. Okay? So it's sort of like a U then a cup then a drop. Okay. So let's have a look at some of the failed uh, example of cup and handle. So uh, this is a micro, uh, this is a gold futures. Uh, it is weekly. So the, the time, okay, so if I, okay, so I have found another cup here. And if you take note, this cup takes about more than one year to form, okay? As compared to our crude oil, it was maybe three months, but uh, the, the goal was, it took about one year, okay? Then, okay, uh, well, maybe, I mean, at that, at maybe in the middle of April, then you probably will take note on the handle formation already, but then, we all know we are looking at the high rates uh, era then, so uh, the gold will drop a lot more probably to, to enter into the 1,600 level. Okay, so in this case, uh, the handle is too long and we are looking at, you know, breaking below here. So in this case, this is a fail a cup and handle formation. Okay, yeah, so back to Fibonacci again. Okay, so how, how do you plan Fibonacci on our Philip Noah platform? So if you are already our, our client using our platform, or if you are using our uh, demo account, then uh, you can uh, do it do this. Okay, so uh, you open a chart and on the on the third right uh, menu bar, you click it and then click on the Fibonacci drawings, then uh, choose the replacement. Okay, okay. so once, oops, yeah, so once you have the high point and you found the bottom here, then you can use the replace, uh, Fibonacci retracement. Okay, so uh, from the high point, drop to the low point. You are able to do this once you have found the bottom. Okay, so okay, you drop it down. Then coincidentally, okay, um, they kind of fall into one of our golden ratio. And then it goes up a little bit before continue the downtrend. Okay, so at this point, um, you probably uh, will take note on this, as I call it the hidden resistance here. Okay, so if it's break up, then you can go long. Uh, once it go long, then probably you want to take note on this resistance. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is a five minute chart. Okay, so even though five minutes, you are able to use it when we have a huge swing like this. Okay, so let's see what's happened after that. And yeah, so after that, it, uh, it breaks above here, then it didn't break on the 61.8%, then sort of uh, drop back again. So at this point, you are able to sort of, you know, uh, look at some of the resistance, whether you want to start short selling. If it breaks above, then you want to go long. If, yeah, it failed to go above, then you can start shorting, then maybe take profit and, you know, before entering again, okay? Or you can also draw a, uh, you know, a downtrend line. If it breaks above, then, yeah, you can look for long, but then take note on this. So because it might uh, hit the resistance here and falls further, continue the huge uh, downtrend. Okay, types of trades. Okay, so of course there are a lot of different types of trades out there, right? It, so, but then uh, for this session, we only cover a few of, of the important ones, okay? So, um, I mean, uh, although we say swing trader, momentum trader, but then yeah, you can look at it as the type of trade, not the type of trader. Okay, so depending on the situation, you might want to do this type of trade, uh, but then when the situation change, then you might want to, uh, you know, uh, go with uh, another type of trade, okay? depending on which you are most comfortable with. Okay, so the first one uh, is the scalper, uh, which scalper they basically uh, enter and exit the market in a few seconds or a few minutes, okay, the in out, we call it the fast in fast out time, okay. And then uh, we have the swing trade trader. So swing trader, they sort of like, uh, you know, swing high uh, and then, you know, swing low, basically buy at a low point and sell at a high point. Um, so they kind of, if it's uptrend, then it swing, swing until the sort of the peak and then, you know, get out and then maybe short again uh, for the for the downtrend, okay. And then we have the momentum trader. So momentum trader, they look at the the mom, well, uh, look at the momentum. If there's a lot of uh, momentum uh, in this price, a lot of buyers are coming in, sort of push up the price. 
uh, then the uh, momentum trader uh, will, will uh, enter the, the market until they see uh, the momentum is going down. There's not, not a lot of buying interest or not a lot of selling interest. Okay? Then they will uh, leave. And then we have the day trader. So day, day trader, as the name suggests, you basically trade within a day. So before the market close, you enter and exit, enter and exit the market. So whatever is happening overnight when you are sleeping, it doesn't matter because you are not in the market. So yeah, so only when the market open the, the next day, then uh, depending on what the situation is at that time, then you will uh, enter the market again, okay? And lastly, we have the position trader. Um, so position trader, normally they would take a longer approach where they kind of, uh, when, when the overall uptrend is there, then they will kind of ignore the daily fluctuations as long as the, the huge uh, trend is there. Okay. okay, so we know a few types of trades now. So when you look at uh, this type of um, charts, so what would you do? So basically different people will have different methods. Okay, so if you are, yeah, so this is a four hours uh, chart, by the way. So because I choose four hours because it's it's it looks pretty. It's a very very comfortable uh, chart. Okay, and then you have the peak, and you also can see a little bit of the downtrend. Okay, so if you are a scalper, then probably you know in one of the chart it it goes up and down very quickly. Then you uh, buy and sell, buy and sell uh, very quickly to get the quick profit. Okay. And then we, oops, and then we have the swing trader. The swing trader basically it go with the swing. Okay, then uh, when when the price is sort of reached peak, then you will sell and then swing all the way down. Okay, so up, down, up, down. Um, yeah, so that's swing trader. And then we have the momentum trader. So uh, maybe this is not quite not a best uh, illustration because if you look at the volume i mean if you zoom in the volume then probably uh, you can see some of the you know uh, the, the, the some of the force of momentum uh, in, inside here okay but then uh, at this four hours chart it's hard to, to show you the, the volume and some of the other indicators mm -hmm. okay but then anyway uh, you can see there's a more a volume, the red volume, which is normally we say uh, the, the selling uh, volume here. So yeah, momentum trader will sort of come in until uh, when the selling pressure is gone, uh, the buyer start comes in, then uh, the momentum trader will, will buy or, or get up. Okay. And okay, day trader. Okay, so this is four hours and this is actually a two months trade. Uh, I mean, two months chart all the way. Um, so if you are day trader, although uh, it's an overall uptrend, but then if you, for example, if you are trading on the 10th of May, then probably you will want to look at the, the bearish wheel on that day, okay? Even though the long-term trend is, is up, okay? So same thing, same thing here. Um, if, Okay, so if, for example, it's a big downtrend here, but then if you are, maybe if you are trading on the 16th of June, uh, then on that day, you want to go with the bullish uh, trades, okay? So regardless of how bearish or how bullish the, the, the overall market is, then you what matters to you is on that day only, okay? Okay, so position trader, they sort of have a position when the, you know, overall uptrend, then position trader kind of, have a uh, buy position here and then wait until maybe well maybe the peak or in the beginning of june when they think oh 120 is not sustainable then uh, they will hold for uh, one or two months until the high level and yeah they will they will get up once they see there's a peak in the in the price okay okay trading time zone so as mentioned uh, because crude oil it has uh, I mean, the, the crude oil futures market advanced 23 hours. So we need to separate out the, the type of hours that we are looking at. And so we have the typical Asian trading hours, which is in the morning, Malaysia time. Uh, typically, uh, we would say, uh, nine, I would say nine to four. 
and then you have the European trading hours, you know, uh, in the evening and in night time in Malaysia, and then uh, US trading hours are typically uh, 9 30 to 4 a.m. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at Asia time. So when when you are, you know, you are a morning trader, you want you don't want to look at the market at night time. Okay, so this is the thing you are looking at during the, the morning hours in Malaysia. So uh Okay, so typically I would say uh, in between eight to three hours uh, is where the market is sort of active, but not as active as the night time. Okay, so the volume you can see is not that huge, uh, and basically the whole morning they kind. Of, this is one hour chart. Okay, so they basically they uh, they move in a very tight spread like this. Basically, what well, we can say consolidate, but of course there's some exception. Okay. Okay, so if I if we zoom in into five minutes, okay, so basically it moves something like that, and okay, not a huge swing, basically just up and down within the range. Um, yeah, so at this point, uh, then probably you will want to trade uh, with the with the, the trade within range bound. Okay. So yeah, so if you if any one of the day when when uh, the price moves out of your range and you don't feel uh, comfortable to trade, then just leave on the day. Then you come back the next morning. Okay. So um, uh, when you are looking at the Asia time, you can pay attention to this hour. Okay. So normally, if you look at the eight eight a.m. chart, the eight a.m., nine a.m., and two p.m. respectively, then normally at this uh. uh the, the, the candlestick at this hour, if you look at the five minutes or 10, uh, 15 minutes, then you would notice they will normally at this particular hour, there will be a huge uh, swing in the candlestick. Okay, and with the European hour, yeah, typically uh, the, the price action typically happen in between four to 6 p.m. Okay, uh, so when you, if you have any position uh, in the Asia times, then you might want to take note when you we are entering the European uh, time zone, okay. So the 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 volume start to pick up, okay. So then you you will get some of the trend, okay. So if you zoom in into five minutes, this is uh, what you will get, kind of a huge swing, okay. Okay. So uh, typically, if you look at the European time zone, uh, maybe at four p.m., then you, if you look at the particular candlestick, then you notice normally there will be a huge candlestick. Okay. okay, so now let's move on to the US hours. Uh, definitely at, at, during the US hours, uh, you have a, the most volumes and you have a huge candlestick like this, okay, one hour. So um, I would say normally the, the most active, uh, in my personal opinion, uh, it will be in between 8 p.m. to 2 p.m. at uh, 2 a.m. in Malaysia time. Okay, so if you zoom in, this is what you are looking at. If you'd like to do a little bit of scalping, you know, some of the, the short, kind of short-term swing trading, then probably this is the, the time that suits you most, okay? So in the uh, US hour, you can pay attention to the 8 p.m., 9 p.m., at sometimes 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. Uh, candlestick, if you open the, the five minutes or 15 minutes uh, candlestick. Okay, type uh, trade with calendar. So uh, in this case, uh, personally, I don't think, uh, to me, I don't find it very uh, effective when I look at the date, I wait for the data every week, and then I look at the price, because sometimes even though maybe the inventory is higher than expected or lower than expected, but then the market didn't really uh, respond to it. So uh, personally, I think uh, trade with calendar is not that effective, okay? Lastly, we are visualizing news impact. Okay, so okay, so this is uh, easy. Uh, in, I mean, since last year, we are talking about uh, the endemic uh, report opening of the, the countries, then, then um, okay, prices all up. But then at the same time, we have some noise. We have the Ukraine-Russian tension, and then we have COVID new wave sort of push down, uh, uh, short-term wave push down the price. And then, but then the, up, the big trend is still an up, okay. And now, uh, and then the last push was the Russia and Ukraine war, which pushed to the well, super high price of the crude oil, okay. And so, uh, subsequently, Russian oil was be, was being sanctioned, and Russian is out of the 
equation of the world supply. Okay, so it is slowly uh, going up again, but then at the same time, we oh sorry, we have another China lockdown, which sort of gives some other noise, which we think oh the dem world demand will uh, be lower because of the China lockdown. So it kind of have a down um, downwards pressure, but then uh, uh, the the major ones are uh, the russian oil is still out of the equation so the supply is still very tight and then lastly this is a new one so i put it in a brown color because probably it will soon turn to red uh, same as the, the impact of the russian sanction so now we are looking at the, the fear of slowing down of the economy but then at the same time we need to keep in mind the russian oil is still out of the equation okay so this is some of the noise you know, how you visualizing the noise okay yeah, reading the chart so of course definitely there are a lot of chart pattern which we it is impossible for us to cover okay but then uh, in this session we are able to cover uh, the candlestick so how do you read the candlestick okay so of course we know the the, the red one is the bearish means the price is going down and the green stick means the price is going up so when you on a chart when you look at the Kind of state you, you will see if you see a very solid green or a very solid red uh, candlestick so that means a lot of bias is in there and the price the, the momentum uh, price is very uh, very solid okay so it's definitely an, an, an uptrend and this one is definitely an downtrend and then moving uh, moving on to here this is a less bullish and you know you have a buyer pushing up the price but then the seller kind of pushed down a little bit yeah, same goes to this one and then move on to the third one this is less much less bullish because you know the seller kind of push it uh, the price further down and this one the buyer push the price further up okay. and then this one is kind of like a 50 50 in the middle so the price was like going up and down at the same time but then it closed a slightly higher okay so same goes to this one it goes up and then down and then close uh, slightly lower Okay, and then this is the one, the, the neutral one, which uh, normally when you're trading, you wouldn't like it because it kind of like the price can goes up and down, and then at the end, it backs to the, to the same level. It kind of not bullish, not bearish, kind of like don't know where to go. Okay, okay so now uh, if we plot it on a chart, so this is a one hour chart. Um, yeah, obviously this is a very solid bearish uh, sticks here. Okay, so if you like to do scalping, then probably you enter swing, you, you know, uh, go all the way down. And okay, so in the middle, you kind of like, you know, a lot of uh, not that bullish and not that bearish sticks in the middle here when you are in the uh, consolidation phase. Okay, okay simple to this one, although, okay, so now. Uh, you can see that the seller kind of uh, get get in here, but then uh, it needs a, a few more push. Um, a, a, a weaker buyer here, a, a kind of a stronger seller here to kind of break uh, break out uh, break down below. So okay, it's a very solid bearish again. And yeah, so uh, when you hit a certain low level, then you will see some kind of you know. Uh, the, the buyer starts coming in sort of like a, a, uh, maybe you, are, you maybe you can say it's a reversal uh, candlestick like that okay? and then a solid bullish comes in okay okay so uh, I mean entering the trade how do you when you I mean how do you know when you want to enter enter a trade or exit the trade okay so first of course, uh, you, you need to identify the trend, whether it's going up or down, then you find the support and resistance, your entry and exit point, the risk and reward. Are you, are you, are you willing to risk $2 in order to earn only 50 cents, which is not logic, right? So yeah, you need, your, your reward need to be much higher than your risk. And then also, you need to, to know when to get out, you know, if, if the market go against you, how much it can go against you before you, you leave the market or how much profit you want to take. Okay, so on the opposite side, uh, when do you want to exit the trade, you know? So how long you want to stay in the market? The, the, 
in terms of crude oil, the price will not stay high together. The market will never be a, be a, be a straight line, right? And then stop loss. So, uh, you know, how, how much uh, loss you want to see before you get out of the market? And okay, profit, profit target also, you know, uh, when you have a, a target in mind, how much profit you want to take for this, for this time, then when your target is hit, then probably uh, you just want to get out, take the profit and get out of the market. Because some of the trader they are, you know, sometimes people get greedy when they see profit that keeps on uh, staying in the market and then uh, they are unwilling to get out because they believe the market will go higher and higher and then at the end they turn the, a profiting trade into a losing trade. And so that's what we don't want to do. And then uh, we, if you see the, the less attractive risk and reward, then yeah, you, you don't want to enter the trade. And lastly, in the, is the most important one is the contract, uh, contract big Terry price action. When when the when you look at the news, the news say, oh, the supply is very tight, very bullish for the for the for the mark for the crude oil market, for example. But then when you look at the chart, maybe you look at the the morning when you when you open a crude oil chart in the Asia time in the morning 8 a.m. Uh, then normally the price wouldn't move that much. Then you would say, eh, hey, I thought it's very bullish, <laughs> and then yeah, the price just won't move anywhere. Okay, so yeah, if you look at the if you look at if you see any uh, different price actions action as compared to the news or the sentiment, then probably you are not comfortable and so stay out of the market. Okay. Okay. Reading the chart, so I, I mean for for some of the experienced trader, then probably this is very easy for you. Okay. So of course we identify the trend first, an uptrend here in the beginning, and. Okay, so you, you draw a line, an uptrend line, because you want to see how low can it, can it go, okay? the, the, the higher low, how long can it go. So you sort of draw a line here. So uh, when you draw a trend line, then you, you can allow, we are allowed to, to uh, allow some of the, the break below here. Okay? And then, okay, how high can it go on, on the uptrend? So you draw a line, a channel. Okay? So basically it kind of break uh, in between this trend. Okay, so okay, it the, the market it has to stop, it cannot go up forever, right? So okay, so you now uh, for this case we saw 100 and about 120 level is not sustainable. So we found our uh, top here a huge a major resistance for us, and the market stays. Uh, we we rest for a while, consolidate for a bit before starting the downtrend. And okay, so you see the support resistance. And okay, so the downtrend starts to kick in, and okay, so how how I mean how low can it go? So when there's a reversal like that, it's going to to retest the previous um, the previous support. Okay, so the previous support will become our uh, resistance now. Okay, so this is my support. So I'm waiting in a general downtrend. So I'm waiting for it to break below here. Then. Okay, it breaks below, then it's gonna, gonna retest again. Retest, okay, retest, then drops to, to some of the, uh, I found another support here, okay? And sometimes when you look at support, you can refer back to, to the previous price, okay? So then I found another um, uh, resistance here, okay? So you can see it's going to retest again, drop below the, uh, the support, then retest again, and yeah, drop below the support and retest again, and it's going gonna go further down. Okay, yeah. So some, if you are a very prudent trader, then probably you want to wait for for a retrace. Uh, I mean, retest before entering a short uh, position here. Okay, so okay, again, reading the chart daily. So at this point, we are uh, in this below the $100 level, okay, so same thing. Uh, so this is, uh, in the previous chart, we were looking at um, the cup and handle, it was in May, right? But now we take into consideration in, uh, for the latest price. So, okay, again, uptrend here, and now it breaks uh, below, uh, below our trend line. Okay, at this point, because we take into consideration uh, of the the new 
the, the resistance here in June up to July here and kind of have a, a wedge here instead of a, a, the, the red zone. Okay, so there's a, a really a slightly higher um, resistance here. Okay. okay, so we have the rising wedge here. Okay, then uh, the rising wedge is a bullish, uh, sorry, a bearish uh, trend. So uh, right, okay, so it drops and it, it uh, at this point we can see our golden ratio about 50 percent here about 96 dollar is our support then it's gonna re, uh, retest here and if uh, we are looking at recession then probably it will hit uh, goes up to 108 probably that level and before going further down if we are really looking at recession then probably it's gonna test here then gonna drops to uh, okay drops to about our eight, about 88 to 85 level here okay but then if you know something unexpected happened to the russia you know more sanctions things like that then probably they are going to you know bounce back to, to our red zone again okay so yeah so this is a rising wage okay the big the, the, the daily chart sort of the big trend is a rising wage okay so at this point uh we are looking at the a very bearish pattern for crypto Okay, so that's that. Lastly, uh, trading mindset, uh, which is uh, the, what the, the important element, not, not because you are trading crude oil or things like that, whether you are uh, trading in a stocks market, you know, in the CPO or other, other market, then this is, uh, these are the questions that you need to ask yourself every day. Okay, of course, there are a lot of different types of uh, better questions to ask you, not, not on this slide. Okay, so basically, you know, are you, are you, you know, you cannot sleep well at night. Are you being angry if you find you, you made a mistake, a stupid mistake when you are trading, uh, you know, things like that, then uh, you want to uh, avoid this kind of uh, mindset in your mind. Okay. Especially this one is the market. <laughs> okay. But uh, on the other hand, uh, if you want to, to trade, then you, you definitely need to, you know, test check your, your trade. And if you make some mistake, then you need to go back the mistake uh, and see why at this at this uh, price level you do, do such uh, decision. Okay, and, and in the future, then you you'll be more comfortable uh, with the price, and especially when you see a zigzag uh, price movement, you'll be more uh, comfortable with the, the zigzag uh, price uh, movement. Okay, so lastly, so okay, definitely in any kind of market, uh, they are, you know, we look at the fundamental side, which is easy. We look at the news, look at uh, the, the data, things like that. And then on the other hand, technical. Um, so technical, well, I mean, technical is the price action. So what determine the price action is the human uh, reaction. So okay, you are good at technical, which is fine, but uh, sometimes you also need to take uh, in human factor into considered consideration because at all level price at all price level there will definitely be a profit taking whether you are looking at the 90 dollar or 90.1 dollar per barrel there will be a profit taking because we we have a scalper right that fast in fast out of the market so yeah so and so it makes a price move in a zigzag motion so we need to be very comfortable with the zigzag motion because the price will, will not move uh, in, a, in a straight line okay then uh fading news mania uh, because you know we have a lot of noise now in the market the fundamentally the crude oil uh, market is tight supply because russia is out of the, the equation already but then we are at the same time we are looking at the fear of recession uh, you know uh, less economic activities, things like that. So on a on a day, if you are a day trader or you don't trade for the long for the mid term, then probably on the day when you enter the market, you want to look at what am I looking at. If let's say last week the the, the market the, the news was were bullish last week, but then this week if you want to enter the market, then you need to see whether the, the news effect is still on the market or not. Okay, so. And last uh, and next, 
again, the, on, on the contradictory price action. So although, yeah, last week the, the market was bullish, but then maybe today when you look at the price, maybe you are looking at the, the higher low side of the price today. So although the it's very bullish in the market, but then when you trade on the day, the day is the higher low, but then you go long for the whole day, then yeah, this is not what we want to do. Okay. And uh, the fifth one, uh, which is the most interesting, is you know, some of the holiday periods, weekend period, like for example, if today is Friday and some of the traders they want to close their position, if they have a long position, they want to close by shorting, or if they have a short position, they want to close by going long uh, in the in the market. Okay, then uh, okay, and then you know, sometimes we have the holiday periods and I find it quite uh, interesting last week is, um, you know, last, uh, on the 4th of July was the US uh, National Day holiday. And then on the 5th of July in the US market, basically the, the commodities market kind, kind of drops a lot. If you look at the gold, uh, the crude, crude oil price, basically they the fall, fall to a new, I mean, a new, new level. Okay? The gold was barely, I think the 1,700 level and the crypto was so, I'm not mistaken, dropped below a $100 level. But then when you look at the news, you couldn't really find much about anything, what was going on, right? And But then the news would just say, oh, the fear of recession. However, the market supply remained tight. You only, that's the only thing you can find on that day. But then, you know, for some reason, the market was, the commodity market was down. Okay. So we need to take uh, some of this in consideration. Okay, so that's the end of uh, oops, that's the end of my presentation. Now I'll pass back to Sherry. Okay, uh, so thanks, Liao. So before we proceed to the Q and A section, let me do some uh introduction, eh, extra information regarding on our company. So so just give me a while. Okay, so so no matter you are our client or not, we offer one-to-one -one coaching sessions, free seminars and webinars and free account openings. So next, so for the free one-to-one -one coaching sessions, the key, co the key topics that we are focusing are introductions to future tradings, product knowledge, platform coachings, and the chatting systems. Uh, other than that, uh, for the... Uh, we also conduct free seminars and webinars regularly, but since we do not, uh, currently we have start organized the seminars at the moment. So we also will provide half webinars and half seminars. So you guys, if you guys are interested, you guys can watch out on our Facebook as we will post uh, the schedule, schedule for the seminar or webinars. Okay, so next. So this is the upcoming webinars. So if you guys have in, have interested to know about the introduction to yes CFDs, so you guys can scan on the QR code and then make a registration for the upcoming webinars. Okay, so I will I will stay here for five seconds, yeah. Okay, so now uh, I will move to the QA sections. So Liao, are you there? Yes, okay, yeah, thank you, Sherin. So now we are in the Q&A session uh, very quickly. Okay, so uh, we have some questions. So the first one is, uh, is, your, uh, is your service linked to TradingView? If not, do you have plans to link to TradingView? So at this moment, uh, our uh, Flip Nova training platform, uh, we, are, we are not linking to TradingView uh, because you know, if you tr try it on, then I think uh, you'll find it very easy to use. Uh, at this point, uh, I don't think we have any plans to link to TradingView, okay? But then if you want to try off uh, Philip Nova Trading Platform, uh, you are welcome to try on our uh, demo account. So you can contact one of our representatives and they are able to help you. Okay, next questions. Um, sorry. Okay, so the next question is, how is the correlation between US dollar and crypto oil prices? Um, yes, there, uh, in terms of correlationships, uh, there is 
no doubt there's a relationship between the US dollar and the crude oil price, just like gold. Um, but then, I mean, in, in at this point, we are looking at a few other factors, a lot of other noises uh, in which uh, US dollar might not be the only uh, only you know factors. But of course, when the US dollar is expensive, then uh, there will be a downward pressure to all types of commodities. When the US dollar is cheap, then uh, the commodities uh, basically are cheaper. So the price will go up, okay? In general speaking. Okay, next questions. Um, what is the spot month for crude oil futures contract? Uh, same as palm oil, which is the active month. Okay, uh, so I, I think this question is asking about the active month for crude oil, okay? So, okay, uh, we all know the, the crude palm, the CPO, crude palm oil active month is normally three months yeah, the third month of the active month. But then crude oil, uh, at this moment, we are looking at the September one, okay? So uh, uh, we look at the, uh, the the last trading day. So uh, I think before before 15th of August, if I'm not mistaken, uh, then at that time, August was the active month for crude oil. But now we have passed our 15th, then our crude oil uh, active month, we are looking at, looking at the September month. Okay. Uh, next questions. Uh, okay, so the next question is, can we